Well, folks, we're live again, and you know we have some more news. Blake Snell, it seems like becomes it becomes closer and closer that the Astros may sign Blake Snell simply because they're reporting on it. We're going to share the reports, the tweets, or the X's, whatever they call them now, on this pop up edition of Locked On Astros. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked On Astros. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we update you joints for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. Sometimes it's a hourly Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talk Stros. You can find the show at Locked on Astros, your team every day. And guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go subscribe to us. Give us a big fat thumbs up and become an every day or by watching us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check us out. And Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H and Wellhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot to talk about today. And thankfully, we actually didn't do the show last night because a lot has come out today. Uh, today, it was kind of more of a speculation by Chandler Rome. He said, well, I hear rumors that there could be um, the Astros are looking at a starting pitcher. I I'm putting the the dots together. It seems like Blake Snell is somebody they went after before. So I think uh, there's a chance that uh, Blake Snell could be the Astros choice here. Then fast forward a little bit later. uh, And Jose Arquiti was supposed to pitch 60 pitches in a minor league game. This is perfectly normal situation and the big league game. Sometimes they want to see the uh, bullpen guys pitch They they still don't know who's going to be in the bullpen. So they want to see those arms pitch. But he was supposed to pitch 60 pitches. He pulled himself out after 43, which is never a good thing when you see a pitcher pull himself out with elbow uh, sore, uh, soreness. And so that kind of led to Dana Brown uh, kind of maybe uh, getting a little bit more serious about going after Blake Snell. Uh, and apparently this wasn't just uh, Dana Brown waking up this morning and saying, you know what? Let's go get uh, Blake Snell because they've been having scouts watching him pitch. And uh, Blake Snell, to his credit, he has not been just sitting on his, you know what, eating bonbons and uh, waiting for somebody to sign him. He's actually been getting ready. Right, Brett? Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, he won the Cy Young last year and Blake Snell wants to win. And, you know, everybody thinks um, I saw one take um, in a little uh, group chat I'm in on X and they were like, you know, all this is is this is this is Boris posturing to 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 rip off some team or to pull one over. Look, Boris actually has a pretty good relationship with the Astros. I mean, we've got some of his players and we've made really good deals with Boris clients on this team. So I'm not worried about Boris being in the mix. Look, Boris is losing his power as each day goes by that his guys aren't signed. But what we want to do is we want to look at um, why the Astros would be in on Snell versus Montgomery later on in this in this pop up episode, but you know today Jose Arquiti leaves. But you know what? Look, Ronel Blanco's looking good, Eric. Ronel Blanco's coming to this is a third year in a row. He's coming to spring looking really good. He just has to work on consistency. But I can tell you that I know from his people because um, I talk to people that are close to Ronel on a weekly basis, and they tell me that he's worked even harder than he usually works and he's always been a hard worker but he's worked even harder and they he has a lot of people in his corner um his wife is expecting their second child here pretty soon and so he's got a lot going on she's actually due around the time of opening day so him making the team would be a really really cool booth for that family but Renault Blanco dude if this guy can just consistently put it together then that helps ease your mind. And if you can go out and get someone like a Blake Snell, even if it's on a one-year deal, like, hey, Snell, come on, let's go get a ring. Let's go Let's go get some jewelry, and let's add it to the trophy case, and let's go do this. And, you know, I know there's concerns with his walks and things like that, but I think in this, with this roster, with this lineup, he fits perfectly. 
So uh, let's kind of bring up to while well, you're talking about Ronel Blanco, uh, he's out of game. Josh Hader's on the mound right now. I'm watching it. And uh, he pitched uh, four innings, no hits, two walks, five strikeouts. His ERA on the spring training is zero. So, yeah, yeah. if this is your fifth starter, it, that's not bad on most teams. But I think the Astros understand the teams they're facing. Um coming out of the shoot they're facing the yankees they're facing the braves they're facing the rangers these are all great teams so uh but right now what we heard today is channel rome's uh take kind of change uh, so go ahead and put that up there uh oh yeah sorry yeah here you go i, I got you I'm, i was off there okay right here boom Okay, so, so it says, um, so Ken Rosenthal and Chandler Rome basically said the same thing. The Astros are pursuing uh, Snell. And uh, this is something that uh, came that was a little bit different than what happened earlier. Uh, earlier, it was like, could they pursue Snell? Now it they are actively pursuing. And yeah. down at Bottom, uh, you see Mark Feinstein saying that Blake Snell turned uh, through four simulated innings on Friday in Seattle in front of scouts and the team. I think he threw against um, maybe he threw against a college team or something. And uh, there's uh, teams, uh, scouts from uh, several teams, including the Giants and the Astros. Those attendants were said to be impressed with how ready he looks. So if the Astros were to sign him, it's not for May. It's for like opening, not opening day, but it's for the beginning of the season. Right, Brett? Oh, yeah, definitely. No, he will be ready. Um, when when he gets here, he will be able to probably go on the rotation. Maybe maybe they have to go their first time through. But, you know, that's the thing. If Snell comes in, do you put, do you keep Fromber one, Snell two, or do you put Snell one, Fromber two, and then whenever... Verlander comes back. Do you go Verlander, Snell, Valdez? Do you go? Do you do you go? Do you go JV, um, Snell, then Val? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're looking how, too deep into this. <laughs> no, no, I'm not because that is something you're going to have to be thinking about because now you 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 do have a little bit of risk and and toying with the position of where they go and so that's where I think the minute details and things like that. That is why we got someone like Dana Brown. He's going to know how to orchestrate this. I'm not necessarily worried about the money. A lot of people say, you know, Monty will cost less. But, you know, Eric, you you mentioned to me earlier off air, um, and I even saw this. He's been he's been traded at the trade deadline with three seasons in a row. And so he hasn't right. Isn't that right? I don't know if I mentioned that, but I think yeah, he was with the Cardinals and I, he might have been with another team before, but no, that wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he was, he was with, he was with, um, in 2022, with the, with the Yankee. No, in 2022, he, he went oh, from yeah, the, that's right. the Cardinals 2023 and from the Cardinals to the, to the, um, Rangers. So the last two years in a row, he's been traded at the trade deadline. Remember, Jordan Montgomery's best season was in 2017. Well, uh, I would say, well, I guess maybe 2023 is his best year, but he was 10 and 11. Um, he's never been more than he's, he's been nine and six one time. Um, but I don't want to go too far into that. I'm just saying like, look, there's a reason why crane wants Snell, And I think they've seen it. And, um, I think that he gives us a better chance at going after World Series because then you take even if Urquidy is slow on getting back, even if Urquidy doesn't come back for a couple months, when he comes back in, he could be a bullpen guy as well. And so I think it's definitely, yeah, everybody's like, let's get him. Hey, I'm going to call Dana Brown right now. And no, I'm joking. <laughs> Well, I'll go and call Jim Crane right now. But um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, I get what you're trying to say. But I think uh, to start the season, I think they're going to kind of bring in if they bring in Snell, it would be kind of as the fifth six starter to begin with, just because of how where he will be uh, where, probably getting ready for the season. Okay. Okay. Now, all star break. That's a whole different story. That's when you can say, okay, um, now we can align the pitchers, the, the starters where we want them. You can have JV first. You can have uh, Snell second. You can have Valdez third. You can have, just listen to this. Javier fourth. And just listen how deep this rotation could be. Come playoff time. 
this could be the best rotation in baseball. And that's exactly what Jim Crane is looking at. And uh, in a second, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you some stuff that I talked about in the solo podcast earlier, because it's going to cost a little bit and it's not just the money. It's going to cost some other stuff. So we'll talk about that in a second before we're going to go ahead and talk about um, FanDuel and uh, then uh, Fire TV. All right. So this episode is brought. Oh, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You know that it is that time of year. It is March Madness, and we are ready to roll with that. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you get in on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on the big upset or the number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. New customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first dollar, if your first bet of five dollars or more wins. That's right, two hundred bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all, like the Houston Cougars, right? Whose house? Cougs house. Just visit FanDuel.com/slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And this episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV is really cool. Whether you have a Fire Stick or a smart TV, you can get in on the action. That's right. You plug it in and you get to watch and see millions of movies and TV episodes all for free on live TV. Opening day for baseball, college basketball tournaments. You're going to want to watch the Fire TV. Yeah, I said tournaments because you don't want to forget the NIT, right? Well, that includes all of us here at Locked On and all of the local hosts from all over the country, pro leagues, college conferences. I mean, you can dive into the the game the the game analysis highlights and everything up to March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So check out the Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com forward slash locked on fire TV. All right. So some people were saying, uh, yeah, y'all don't have uh, his number. I'm going to call him right now. You ready? I'm calling Jim Crane. All right. Hey, Jim Crane. Yeah, this is Eric Heisman. I would like to go ahead and say, uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oops. Wrong number. <laughs> Yeah, no, we no. Um, I I actually I actually have Jim Crane's secretary's number. Um, I can call her and see if we can get a meeting with him. Um, I can yeah. do that. Um, hey, I can I can call Shane Reynolds or Phil Garner if you want. Um, see if we can get them on the phone. That'd be kind of cool. Well, uh, it money is one issue. I talked about before on the solo podcast that Sport Spot Track has him. Uh, the market value as about $25 million. So if you're going to sign them for a short-term deal, like a th three-year deal or something, you're probably going to have to overpay him uh, over market value just to get him to come here uh, for three years. Uh, so I think three, year three years at $30 million is pos possibly what you're looking at. So and a three-year $90 million is something that they could be looking at. But I don't really know what exactly... Uh, Scott Boris is looking for in terms of a short-term deal. I'm sure there's going to be some type of opt-out as well, but also uh, he did get a qualifying offer. So I think there's a draft pick included. So I think that you'll lose another draft pick just like you did with Josh Hader. And also you'll be going over to luxury tax. I, I, threshold. I, thought we, I thought we just moved down slots. We don't, we, we miss a, we miss, so we, yes. do, we lose a draft pick or we move down slots. Cause that's two different finish. things. So um, because he got a qualifying offer from the Padres and he declined it, there's a draft pick that's attached to it. There's two separate situations. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what I was okay. trying to explain. So because the qualifying offer, uh, we would actually have to give the Padres a draft pick. And by going over the luxury tax threshold, you would have to go back 10 spots in your first round pick in 2025. So – if the Astros do make this move, they are going for it, ladies and gentlemen. They are, make no mistake. They are sacrificing a lot, a lot of their future because it's not just the money. Uh, it, it's they're sacrificing a lot of draft picks to uh, make this year happen. First, it was Josh Hader. Now it's Blake Snell. 
And so we're going to have the all Padre team from 2023. So I'm just kidding there, but yeah, you know, uh, uh, Hey, look, let's, let's get, let's get Blake Snell. And then if we, if we can't get, um, I'm joking. If we can't get Kyle Tucker, then we'll take Juan Soto from the Yankees after one year in New York. <laughs> yeah. So Rob says we'll lose a third round draft pick if we sign Snell. So, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I just, because, because someone, someone, someone was asking me earlier and, and I forgot about the qualifying offer portion of the discussion. Mm -hmm. I just, I wasn't even thinking about that because had that not been offered, then it would just be moving down slots. Right. right? It, it, that That's another reason why Snell is still available. And I think Montgomery right. is, uh, still has a qualifying offer attached to him as well. So, so. so basically it's not so much, it is monetary in nature. It is maybe because of what the demands are, but it's also what a club is having to give up mm -hmm. and pay. So it's not just pain, it's pain and giving up because I mean, look, this is, this is a whole new ball game. These rules have changed the last, you know, you know, the last agreement that the players union and MLB came in that they, that they came together on has really changed things. So it really does muddy the water, you know, gone are the days of, Oh, we get to sign a free agent, right? There's actual right. penalties involved and they do that to try to keep teams from stacking the team. If I think that's the premise there, um, getting guys to, you know, kind of like the NBA where they jump ship and they all go to one team to win a title. And and that's what I believe the residual effect is there for. Yes. So uh, Greg Kessinger just hit, hit a home run. So he's buying yeah. to try to make uh, the team. Well, I think Greg Kessinger makes the team. Joe, do Joey Loperfito's three for three today. The right. kid's hitting the cover off the ball, Eric. He's playing center field. Could we see him? Get this. Think about this. Why are we so worried about first base? Loper Fido platoons at first base with Jose Abreu. And you can put him in center field every once in a while with Jake Myers. And if Kyle Tucker needs a rest, you can put him in right field. He could be your Dubon Jr. Swiss Army knife. Loper Fido, I th if they can't figure out how to get him enough at bats, I think he starts in AAA to get at bats but he gets called up before the all-star game. Mark yeah. my words, Loberfito will see Minute Maid Park playing, not just in the exhibition game, but he will be in Nationals uniform before the all-star break. I'll be shocked, though. I won't be shocked if he makes the 26-man roster, if I'm being really honest. All right, so uh, guys in the, in the chat, go ahead and offer your comments. What are your thoughts about uh, Blake Snell come, possibly coming to the Houston Astros? Do they need him? Do they need a bullpen arm more? Uh, this doesn't really address the uh, middle innings, but uh, it does in a way you can. Um, Ronel Blanco, I think, will still be the sixth starter. Uh, you, you're going to have 20 games in 21 days. So you're going to need a six starter to start off the season. Then you'll have another rough stretch. Uh, I think beginning April 30th, you're going to be facing a lot of good teams. Um, I, JP France, if he's in a rotation, he's not stretched out. We'll see how much he can do tomorrow. And speaking of which, um, Jose Abreu should be returning back to the lineup tomorrow. So that should be a good sign for the Houston Astros. So there's a lot of good news. I think, uh, uh, oh, um, Justin Verlander was throwing 92, 93 miles per hour in his bullpen the other day. So um, he should be able to uh, face some hitters pretty soon. So he's still two, three weeks behind. So I wouldn't expect him to come up until late April at, at the soonest. So, so here is the comparison between Snell and Montgomery because Montgomery okay. also comes up. Okay. Um, we got this again from Stathead. Um, you can see war. Basically, Snell leads in every category except a World Series. Obviously, it's not his fault necessarily. And the walks, the walks are a little different. Um, Snell does have 30 more games started, um, 32 more games started. So that's gonna be a little different. Almost 200 innings more. He's 65 and 47, a 129 ERA plus. Um, 1,125 strikeouts. His K percentage is 8% higher than Monty. He does have a higher walk percentage, but this is a guy that won two Cy Youngs, two ERA titles. He's been an all-star. Montgomery has not been an all-star. He has a title. He was a key and a key cog in the Rangers winning the World Series last year. Now, Blake Snell, motivated. He's the kind of guy, very competitive. He wants a ring. 
And I don't think money will necessarily be what hangs them up. It will be how they pay him. Will it be a deferred deal? Will it, like you said, will, will there be like a one-year deal with some options? Will there be a three-year deal like you talked about? Um, that is where, and then the Astros have to project out, okay, if we give Snell us money, now then where does that give us flexibility with Tucker, with Bregman? And that is a, that is a tough conversation. The more big names you bring in, the harder it is to hold on to your core guys. And so yeah. are you sacrificing anything bringing him, but is the need there enough that you're willing to outweigh, you, you're willing to weigh the cost of that and take the benefit of possibly going back to the World Series this year and maybe next year because you have someone like Snell in the in the rotation. Yes. Uh, for those of y'all that have just joined us, uh, Blake Snell did throw in, uh, 60 pitches today, uh, which was four innings in a simulated game. So he is stretched out almost to where most pitchers are at this point. I think he would need probably two starts to get stretched out to six or seven innings. I think that uh, traditionally, because he throw, does throw a lot of balls, uh, he would probably be a six inning pitcher anyway. So I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense for the Astros. He has the stuff. He has the strikeouts. He had 230 something strikeouts last year. He had 99 walks. Um, but so that is something maybe the Astros can try to address in the limited time in spring training. But he is the guy that makes the most sense. And if you're going to go above and beyond, have to pay the extra penalty luxury tax, go, go get the best. They did that with Josh Hader. Go do that. Go get the best starter. And you know what? The rest of the American League, they're going to be pissing their pants because they're going to see this rotation come the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to be scared to death. And then you're going to have Lance McCullers uh, throwing his curveball out of the bullpen, and you're going to see whatever Luis Garcia can do. I mean, just think about how scary this freaking rotation can be, this whole uh, pitching staff. So, yeah. yeah, I'm all aboard. So I love this. Doug Doug says, does he snell a World Series? And I can see this right now. I just had a vision. ALCS, Snell pitches the clinching game to go to the World Series. And it's like, it snells like another World Series. That would be great. There you go. Houston Chronicle, you can pay me the, um, you can pay me my uh, my 20% finder's fee on that. So I appreciate it. But dude, 14 days, 14 days mm -hmm. um, until opening day. I mean, days. Um, Eric, you're going opening day, right? Yeah. I paid okay. a lot of money to go opening day. Jeez, the yeah, tickets too. Why me do you too. have to open up against the freaking Yankees? And Garrett Cole isn't oh, even no. starting. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, well, I, I bet you ticket prices are probably going down a little bit with a uh, JV and Cole not pitching. I'm, I'm sure it hit the, hit the market a little bit, but, um, yeah. You Nestor know, Cortez we'll be is the starter for the Yankees now. So yeah. it's going to be Nestor Cortez versus Frommer Valdez. And Frommer did you was hear the announced. Yes, and uh, did you hear the story that uh, from her Valdez's mom was asking uh, Joe Espada, so are, when are you going to announce who's going to start opening day? Because I want to know wow. if my son's going to do something like that. That's funny. No, that's great. So, uh, you know, But yeah, I think from her Valdez deserves to get the opening day start. Uh, he, I mean, if you look past what he did the second half of the season, I think that he just he deserves it of everybody. And Christian Javier, I said this on my, one of my solo shows uh, or after when you left the other day, there's a case with how he's pitched uh, the spring training. He probably had a case to open uh, to do opening day. But I think that because of Frommer's history, you give him the nod. And I well, think yeah, he, well, I mean, he was well, he was last year's opening day starter. And when Jamie's right. not here, he's he's your number one guy. So that's that to me is never is is never in question. Um but um, I like what um, Rob says here. He he's he's opining of what Crane would say to Boris. He's like, "Hey Boris, I'll sign Snell, but I need you to help us with Bregman." Yes. If <laughs> then, if we sign Blake I, Snell, will you help yeah. us sign? <laughs> I would love. I would love to be a fly on the wall and hear these conversations that are going on in Blake Snell's house or wherever he is. I would love to be on both ends of the phone calls because you know Dana Brown's like, "Hey, I know we just talked." But you know what I was thinking, and they're probably thinking of scenarios. You, you remember, you remember this game and in this playoff series. Had we had Blake Snell, we prob he probably would have pushed us to the finish line. And do you remember how Kevin Cash pulled him early? We would never do that to Blake Snell, right? <laughs> I yeah, don't think so they mentioned that, but I could just imagine all the geometry ways of doing the if then statements. Um, if we do not sign 
uh, Blake Snell, then we will not sign uh, Alex Bregman. And I can just go deep in right. going all math nerd there. But um, we don't know if this is going to happen. We do know that the Astros are in serious um, pursuit of Blake Snell at this moment. We know that they were scouting him. Uh, I believe this is the first time we've heard that the Astros have actually scouted a player. So uh, that's that's actually a big news uh, th- there. So all hey, we could do is this, wait. This just okay. in: Michael Taylor went to the Pirates for one year. <laughs> Perkin Rosenthal. Who, Michael who? Taylor is signed with the Pirates. Oh, Michael Taylor. Outfitter? Yeah, just okay. <laughs> breaking news per Jeff Passan. He had it first. Michael okay. A. Taylor went to the Pirates. I saw a Ken Rosenthal tweet, and I was like, "Yes," and I was like. So because I was disappointed, I wanted y'all to feel the disappointment too. Okay. Well, that's all we got for this edition of Locked on Astros podcast. Hopefully we'll be coming back on a little bit later tonight with some Blake Snell news or Brett will have to cover me for the next two days because I'm going to San Antonio to SeaWorld. So we'll see what's happening. But I'm excited about this. If this happens, I'm all bored. If this doesn't happen, I don't know, but no matter what happens, I'm going to bleed Astros orange and I'm going to be Astros fan. And I can't wait for the season to start in 14 days. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett Chancey. We are the Locked on Astros podcast, and we will see you on Sunday. And go Stros. Go Stros. Rock it, baby. Love, love the effects. You get an apple. Apple sucks. Except for the phones. Uh, I'm sorry, Siri. Don't don't get mad at me. <laughs>